is a very thoughtful uh, commentary to both me and our analysis. Um, we have a little bit of time to respond to them. Probably the responses will not be complete and final. It's probably that the continuation of the conversation. Um, so maybe I will start. We just coordinated, socially coordinated, the three of us on the spot using the chat who starts the news. So I am going to start uh, making some comments on, on Nana's uh, presentation. Although many of the things I say may relate to what the was saying. Um, so now I think you talked about uh, dialectics and all the questions that come up from uh, trying to understand how the dialectics is used in the book. Because it's used as a method, but also it's used or it's hinted at as being part of an ontology, and yeah, that's true. Uh, I and mean, it wouldn't be a properly dialectical approach if you didn't create all kinds of discussions and debates and contradictions, uh, which is, you pointed out yourselves. Uh, so, in a way, I will try to answer based on some comments you made, but I doubt that the answer will be final. I uh, hope that's okay. Uh, let, me put, well, let me put it this way first. Um, we created the model with one, with several aims in mind, but one was um, can we create this? Uh, distinctions that will help us get to something that looks like language when all we have to start with is this sensory model stuff, you know, sensory model schemes, interactions, things like that, at a much so called lower level. Um, and therefore, the model is trying to do this, uh, but we will never claim that there is the, it is the final model that says absolutely everything. Yeah, we will never claim that, that there are no ways in which the model could be expanded, you know, uh, developed, you know, uh, corrected, all kinds of things. So, so it's not it's not the final product. It's, it's a big a beginning in the story. So when you talk about whether the model will be would match with empirical observations, which is an important question. Bear in mind that the model is not final necessarily that might continue to develop, and they may be precisely through the attempt to match with empirical issues and phenomena, and finding that that's difficult, that itself may drive a further development of the model. Having said that, uh, the model itself contains a little bit of the answer to the question you're asking, is it an epistemology, is it an ontology? Because the method is it, it, it looks for uh, tensions in a concept. It's using you may think, okay, we are in the realm of epistemology, we have an idea and look for tensions. But it answers uh, the question of how you, what happens in this tension by looking at what really happens in the world, or what, you know, empirical aspects that get increasingly incorporated in the world. So, for instance, the, the plasticity of uh, sensory motor uh, audience is incorporated into the model in the first stages. Uh, the fact that we live in communities that have spatial distributions and so on is incorporated into the model further on, and so on. So it is answering, the model itself is answering or is assuming that we have an ontology that is compatible with it. Whether that's the end of the story from an enactic perspective, whether there are only uh, an ontology is purely dialectical, but I'm not sure I'd be ready to just say that. What we do have is, is a, a, a perspective that looks at um, the co-emergence of practices and knowledges. So we have, we have to do things in the world that tell us how we are you know, living and what we can do to change the world. And that it generates knowledge, and the knowledge changes the practices, and so on. So in a way, there's already a, uh, you know, you, you, later on you might be surprised that, oh, you got a dialectical model, and you've got some dialectical situation, how fitting. Well, no, the, thing, the things originated from our dealings with the world, the back and body, and an active approach to living, you know, with others and the material world. So it's no, 
um, surprised that there is a fit. The same way that there is no surprise that the you know, mathematical concepts work so well for physics. They originate in practices. Now the question is, does this dissolve the tension and the problems that you raise? No, I don't think so. Maybe not. It probably deserves more consideration, but I believe that uh, if you take the caveats that we propose, which are that we're not taking the things in a very dogmatic way, like thesis and thesis and apply to everything, but rather that you're willing to be informed by different tensions, tendencies, problems that happen in very complex systems, then by that caveat, you could say that, well, the model works because the ontology in a way, is reflected in this approach as well. So, yeah, I'm not so sure that necessarily answers anything, but I think it probably it, it, it addresses some of the questions. Um, I think, because we don't have a lot of time, I think I, I, I'll just stop here and go and continue talking about this, and maybe Elena can say something. Okay, okay. We're going to have another one now. Hold on just a second. I think we need to maybe mute the other participants and let all the microphone on. No, a gente precisa. A gente precisa. Um, 
And, and I think that this is a, a difficult question, and it's a question where, that is especially raised for a theory where we want to say that um, what happened in the interaction is, a, is an instance of participation, is also an instance of incarnating or, or you know, citing or quoting um, signifiers, potentially racist signifiers, for example, that are available in our space and are shared, um, but that nobody means or wants necessarily, or, or does, or does not yet have a sensitivity to understand that those are not um, things to repeat or to say. Right, so this whole question of control and responsibility and interaction is really uh, highlighted in our collaborative participatory account, and I think that um, that's really important. So, but I think we want to give a dialectical answer, and I also think that we don't, um, we can't really be satisfied with the reductive account of, of a very neat distribution of roles, such that you could only know a little piece of what's happening. Because I don't think that's really how it works. I mean, you, we test language students, I guess, individually on how well they've learned Spanish or English, and there's something that can be measured there, but it's not really the full picture of how you can perform language with somebody else or foreign language with somebody else, depending on situational affordances and scaffolding. And I think similarly, um, even in an interaction that winds up being very uncomfortable and regrettable, you, people work off of each other and they work with this emergent dynamic and they know how to do it, they know how to create utterances, they know how to respond to each other. And this comes from um, some of what is, you know, we'll talk about tomorrow. Some of our autogeny, our upbringing are always being um, in contact with linguistic engagement and linguistic participation so that we can't help but, but stick around and be in these interactions even if we don't like them. So I think that that shared, that shared know-how is very much not reductive is complicated, but sometimes we have need to think about um, the individual side. And so the last, the last small piece I would say here is that um, our unfinishedness that was highlighted today is part of uh, also why it's important to think about the individual. So if one wants to make an intention or change one's interactional style, or you keep having a problem with the same person, and you want to figure out how to make that better, um, that might feel like a pulling out and I'm pulling into oneself and it's sort of how do I figure out how to do this interaction differently outside of the force of that interaction. But I think any work, you know, following our logic of incarnation of this constant tension that we're going to work with, any work that one would consciously choose to make on oneself would be participatory work and still would still invoke a kind of shared social know-how. So I'll stop there and talk for too long already. Thank you very much for the phrasing of the problem. I think that's, that's something I would like to bring out in relation to your 
that those about what modern models should do in terms of modeling and predicting. Um, and then to, in relation to your uh, points, Elias, um, I wanted to, so you asked, um, um, how can we participate without starting from an already openness? And I would like to say to that that we, um, as the kinds of beings that we are, the biological beings that we are, I think are, we, we start out already open from the way we are born and from the way we emerge from another creature, from another being, from our mother and father. And we, in this, I'm writing a paper at the moment about intersubjectivity and pregnancy in between fetus and mother. And so fetus and mother, even on a physiological level, are very open to each other. And so I just wanted to point out that wondering about how we can start participating if we aren't already open, I, I mean, for me, the reality of our participation is that we are intersubjective um, completely, basically. So, and there's nothing behind that intersubjectivity that is solitary. So these are my two thoughts that I want to add as well. Thank you very much for your comments, Thank you. Um, So can I ask you to say something? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes. Is there time for uh, yes. uh, a yes. Because in, in, in the end, I, I, I didn't say much about any comment about Ira's presentation, and I would just follow up what Hannah and Elena have said. And I, since it's not you who are setting the, you're playing the link that was that okay to say or something like this. Uh, I would give you some advice of what you can say to people who really believe that, uh, that you can have such a reductive perspective. Um, the first thing uh, that I would suggest is that you have to think that chronic, that you have to start thinking of a shared know-how as an instance of a socially constituted know-how, which are not the same thing, but shared know-how typically would be an instance of socially constituting know-how. Meaning what? Well, meaning exactly that the way you acquire the skills, capabilities, powers, and sensitivities uh, cannot happen unless they are enabled by some social engagement with others. And in the, I believe in the book we make some reference, but there's a, a, a detailed discussion in the other book, it says we model life. We show how mother and infant play in the first year according to several empirical longitudinal studies, and we show that the mother acts as a disintegrating factor in creating attention in, in the sensory motor schemes of the infant in order to diversify them first. So the mother says, you pay too much attention to the same toy, you just pay to the other toy. This is not the mean, this is something else. And at six months, the infant can diversify. But then it's too late to disperse. It's just a little bit this, a little bit that, and then I mentioned the mother asks, no, let's focus again. Let's try to play for a longer time we want to be. And so we have an intervention that is constantly disintegrating the uh, sensory model development, creating, therefore, certain structures, the possibility of having done different schemes, like manipulating with both hands the objects and so on, and paying attention to the mother with the eyes or responding to her and so on. And so this is a case in which you cannot say, well, you know, what the baby learned is uh you know, people say, what well, the baby learned is, is a social skill because it's a skill of manipulation, of perception, of grabbing objects and so on, but it is a social skill because it was only developed thanks to this social intervention. So that's what the socially constituted uh, know-how. And share know-how would be a special case in which this process that goes back and forth between the social and the individual is the process of sharing, you know, ways of doing things. Like the example, and now I also remark an example of a car, different cultures and so on. We share them, meaning we know the same thing, we know how to act together to some extent. Uh, and we, the way we, there's this whole story about how we can share such, uh, you know, how that doesn't come through only interactions with the person in front of, 
you know, surely if we ever, you know, meet in person, we shake hands, but we haven't met before. So we might have to create that know-how from scratch in this interaction, we have it. But the fact that we have it, or that an individual has it, doesn't mean that it is the individual. You see what I mean? It doesn't mean that it is something that it has only emerged from my own, you know, uh, attempt at creating ways of connecting to other people. You know, it doesn't happen like that. It's already socially constituted and socially developed. So there is, once you introduce the, the time dimension, the diachronical aspect, which it also questions the very notion of what an individual is, that you can answer your your adaptive reductionist friends uh, and tell them, look, the, the story is not as simple as, as assigning individuated skills to already individuated individuals, because both the skills and the people are continuously individuated, already changing, transforming through social interactions. So you can't just put it very much then connects to what I was saying, the question of responsibility becomes so difficult. Yes, of course. Uh, and it's not a, a, a question you can answer in general, one way or another. Um, so that's what, what I wanted to add. Uh, and I think we probably will have much less.